All right. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to Heavenly uh, eLearning Web class. Uh, we'll be doing BGP attributes today. Uh, this uh, e-learning that uh, we are doing on this slot, like 4.30 uh, p.m. in Brisbane time, we just started from this month and from now on every Wednesday, uh, you will uh, get another session. So for example, initially we used to do three in Wednesday, now we'll do four. The new session that will start at 4.30 in Brisbane time and obviously for one hour. And we are doing a new topics as well, which is BGP attributes. <coughs> So, uh, as you all know by this time, BGP is a protocol that we can use to do routing in between uh, two different autonomous systems, right? So, when we do routing in between two different autonomous systems, so the real path based on ASPAP, and that's sort of a path vector routing protocol uh, uh, BGP is. So when they build path, right, uh, all those routers uh, who, who speaks in BGP, they exchange routing information. So when they exchange routing information in BGP updates, BGP updates along with the network prefix, they carry something else as well with the updates. So that something else has got a very important significance in BGP path selection process which one is the best path when BGP has got more than one path to the same destination, right? So in path selection process, which path will be best path from a number of available option, BGP rely on attributes to select the best path. So, so in every BGP updates, along with the prefix and prefix length, BGP also send attribute information. That is not only one attribute, a number of attributes. and those attributes can be manipulated, can be tweaked, right, to select the BGP best path or to influence BGP best path selection process. This is what very important that we'll be discussing in uh, BGP attribute section today, right? And this is how you will learn how you can incorporate or how you can reflect your organizational business policy in your BGP path selection process. Okay, that is our objective in this uh, e-learning web class. Let's move on. Again, a little bit of introduction about myself. My name is Nirul Islam Roman. I'm uh, currently the senior uh, training specialist in APNIC. I'm in APNIC since 2006 and initially I, I joined in APNIC as a host master and my role was to distribute uh, APNIC resources to our members. Resources in terms of uh, IP address, both before and V6 and AS numbers. Uh, then I move into the learning and development team, and from there uh, I'm I'm trying to uh, help our member in terms of sharing my experience, transferring knowledge, doing workshops, uh, and that help our members to sort of learn industry best practice and build and operate internet effectively. There is a uh, list of my areas that I'm specialized with. So if you have any question on all those uh, areas in, in context, obviously, uh, we can take your question and try to answer your question. All right. And obviously, uh, end of the presentation, I will show you the URL that you can use to send your feedback. Right? Your feedback is very important for us because this is how we will try to improve our future learning session. Okay. So please spare some time and give us some feedback. And last but not the least, acknowledgement to Cisco system because as you know, they are the market share, uh, the market leader in, in routing and switching around the world. And lots of people leave their resources uh, in terms of studying, you know, building contents, building networks. We are not exception. So yeah, so uh, we are sort of acknowledging Cisco systems contribution to us developing the content for us. All right, so yeah, let's move on. Let's have a look and a quick overview uh, that we'll be discussing today. BGP attributes. What is BGP attributes? We'll try to define that. And then, uh, as I said, when BGP sent updates uh, on the update message, along with the prefix and prefix length, they send something else, right? Those something else that we are trying to learn today are a number of, right? Not only one, a number of. So when you need to choose 
a number of options uh, that you have and from that only one or two it's a tricky right so then uh, we have a design issue so which one is uh, right for us which one we should select which one we should tweak or manipulate uh, that will serve our requirement or purpose so what do we do all those attributes that we have in BGP we actually classify them into a number of classes that help you to sort of take the design issues so those will be discussing on the attribute section so well-known attributes and what we have then we'll go one by one all those attributes one of them are uh, sort of as path probably you're already familiar with that uh, as path loop detection how as path detect the loop IBGP, BGP next stop, which is also very important. Next stop, uh, next stop best practices. Uh, what we can do in next stop on the service provider network, so for example, in ISP. What we cannot do in ISP. What we can do in enterprise. What we cannot do in enterprise. Those sort of things we'll be discussing. BGP origin attribute, uh, local preference that uh, we use to sort of manipulate the traffic. Uh, oh. There's some problem, someone's saying frozen. Can you just uh, log out and log in, please, Suva? Probably something with your uh, internet connection, I believe. Just try to log out and log in again. Okay, so uh, then uh, uh, we'll see our community attributes, uh, and then after what the end, we'll see among uh, or from among all the attributes that we have what other priorities that BGP will consider to select the best path, okay? So this is what sort of an objective or overview that we have for today. So BGP attributes. What is BGP attributes? I have already defined sometimes what is BGP attributes, right? So a value that BGP update masses carry, right? A value that BGP update masses carry and that help BGP to select the best path. Those attributes that BGP send in updates are a number of types. So very popular one is well-known attributes and mandatory attributes. Well-known means everyone knows about that. Uh, all the BGP implementations, uh, like you know, in based on different different vendors when they implement their coding. Uh, the well-known attributes they must support right support means when it comes they should sort of support it that when that updates comes mandatory attributes are something that must include with every route entry it means when you are implementing a bgp you know protocol mandatory attributes that something that must be included in your update message you must include that in your update message otherwise if you don't include that into your update message and if you send that update message to the BGP speakers or your BGP neighbors there will be a you know, drastic effect what effect when that update message goes to the neighbors your BGP speakers when they receive it, if those mandatory attributes are not there, they'll just send an error message to you and then terminate the BGP session. That's what we call BGP, just shoot themselves, right? It's a very funny protocol. If something they don't understand, so for example, in mandatory attributes, they just shoot themselves, start and you know, tear down the session, terminate the session. So those mandatory uh, attributes you must have in all BGP implementation, for example, origin, AS path, next stop, local prep, you must have. Then you have discretionary attribute. It means those discretionary attributes you must recognize. Not necessarily you have to add into your update all the time. So when you are sending BGP update, you don't need to incorporate those into your BGP update, not necessarily. But the discretionary attribute, when you receive from your speaker and if they include that you must recognize it you can't just ignore you have to recognize it what what coming inside right you must be able to read it and as i said on the slide 
not necessarily every update that you receive from your peers or BGP speakers, they will always include that things. No, sometimes they can, sometimes they cannot. But if they can, if they add it, then you must recognize it. So that, that discretionary attribute. Optional attribute, it means not necessarily you have to support it. If some attributes that uh, your upstream or peer, they send it to you, not necessarily you have to support it, right? That's what optional. Optional attributes are two type again, transitive and non-transitive. What is transitive? Transitive means when those update comes from your upstream to you, you can send it to the next router or next peers, BGP peers, when the update goes, right? Those are transitive. Non-transitive means if the update comes to you, if you don't understand it, you just discard it. No harm. That's what non-transitive. If you see from the global perspective, global point of view, from one part of the network, it's a very far end of internet, right? If any routers are sending any BGP update message comes to you, if it is non-transitive, you can discard it. What is the impact? That particular ISP, BGP update message will not go to the other part of the internet. So there will not be any global effect for that non-transitive attribute, right? But for the transitive attribute, they have a global effect. So they, that, transit, that attribute, you transit to the next AS, they transit to the next AS, this is how it goes everywhere in the world. And if you see the BGP path selection process, that can influence, right? So, so transitive, non-transitive, if you see some, some update has got, uh, or, or, or some implementation, if you need any global effect, you should send, send some transitive attributes if you don't want, just not transitive, right? Few example that we have, aggregator attribute as optional uh, transitive attribute, community transitive, multi exit dis, uh, dis, uh, you know, distinguisher like MED, right? That is non transitive. So yeah, so those are the classification that we have in BGP updates. So if I summarize those classification, two part well known mandatory well knowns are not necessarily you have to be included in your updates but when you receive it you must support it right mandatory means you must send it or you must include into your update when you receive it you must understand those right otherwise it will create an error condition and thus determine the bgp session discretionary attribute you must recognize it but not necessarily every update need to be present and need to be sort of uh, need to have those attributes so for example atomic aggregate i'll explain all those attributes optional not necessarily have to support or all the bgp implementation has to support it right and there are two type again transitive and non-transitive transitive means even though you don't support it you just transit it to other as non-transitive discard it right so those are the attributes that we have based on the classification that we saw now you can think about the global perspective and try to see which attribute can be useful in which situation. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, this, that is the one I have already explained. Well-known mandatory attributes. So from well-known mandatory attributes, this classification, very popular three uh, well-known mandatory attribute that we have is as path you must have next hop you must have origin you must have all bgb implementation the must have those three well-known mandatory attributes well-known discretionary attribute local preference atomic aggregate those are very well known if you uh, don't have it will create an uh, error condition right oh sorry uh, sorry uh, it will not create an error condition but you have to understand those so, so local preference or uh, and uh, atomic aggregate i'll explain what is atomic aggregate what is local preference probably i'll explain now atomic aggregate is if we have 10 20 routers right 10 20 routers probably you have got number of networks connected right so 
when you connect your networks, not necessarily you will you'll use the whole slash 32 in IPv6 or whole slash 24 or whole slash 22 in IPv4 on the router. You just subnet those things and use small prefixes on different, different interfaces, right? So when you use different, different interfaces and different, different small prefixes, then from the router itself, you don't announce all those small prefixes. You announce an aggregated slash, for example, 32 or slash 24, right, in IPv4. So what do you do? You add a network statement in BGP. And in the network statement, you are sending the whole slash 24 from or whole slash 32 in IPv6 from a single router. And from there, you did your own subnetting plan and then configure those routers. So what you are doing from that particular router when you are sending an aggregated uh, network statement or aggregated uh, advertisement with a network statement command, we call it atomic aggregate. Right? Okay. This aggregation can be two types, atomic aggregation and proxy aggregation. Proxy aggregation means the origin AS probably hasn't done the aggregation, but the transit AS on the upstream did the aggregation. That's what we call proxy aggregation. There can be a situation, so for example, in, in, in Australia, if Telstra is the biggest transit provider and Telstra has got 10, 20 customers, so among 10, 20 customers, so two customer, they are dealing with two different slash 24 in IPv6, uh, sorry, IPv4, right? So that two slash 24 in two different customers can be aggregated if those are contiguous on the Telstra side. If Telstra, in that case, do the summarization, that's what we call proxy aggregation, okay? Then we have our uh, optional attributes. Optionals are two type, transitive, non-transitive. As I said, uh, Transitive, if you don't understand, you need to transit to the next AS, right? Community aggregator are those type. And non-transitive are AMD. So you just receive from your speaker, you action it, or probably you don't need to send it to the upstream. Just utilize in your network and that's it. I'll see, I'll show you like, you know, how AMD works. Okay. As I defined, well-known attribute, must recognized must be recognized and are propagated to other neighbors. I have already covered those parts. S path, next stop, origin, local brain, atomic, this is all are done. So the duplicate slide, I think. Those are all done, those are also duplicate slide, I think. Okay, now let's have a look. The very important one is S path attribute. What is an S path attribute? As you saw, or as you probably know from the basic BGP, when BGP build path, they build path based on AS path, right? So for example, in this diagram, or if I bring a sort of a complicated diagram, it's not there, but anyway, in this diagram, S500, if need to, reach S100, the subnet 180.10.0.0. So if this is the physical connectivity diagram, right, of the ASS, prefix 180, prefix 180.10.0.0 slash 16 has been originated from AS100. So when it has been originated, then AS100 or the router who has originated, right, or the router who has done that aggregation, start sending that update message to the next AS. So when the update message comes to next AS, which is AS200 in here, what AS200, what they will do, they will forward that update to AS300. Then what AS300 will do, they will forward that update to AS500. So this is how this update message will be propagating across the whole world internet, right? So now if we take any of the AS, say in our case AS500, and, and see how it looks. To reach prefix 180.10.0.0/16, in this subnet, if you need to reach on this subnet, how you can go from AS500, right? What is the path? The path is, from 500 it goes to 300, which is this, then it goes to 200, which is this, then it goes to 200, which is this. So this is how BGP will know how to reach that particular network from the AS path. How the AS path will be built? 
if you look very carefully how the AS path will be built even though AS, AS100 can be connected with another or a number of AS around but only those AS who cooperated AS100 to send that update message back to the other AS and then from their other AS and then from it come to uh, it come uh, it came to AS500 this is how path will be built but if AS100 has got another path like another connectivity even and but through that connectivity they ha those AS hasn't cooperated those AS hasn't forwarded that advertisement to the other routers the path will not be built that's what we call need cooperation and then this is what we call transit service so getting transit service from there's ASS to go to that particular destination so this is how AS path will be built when that AS path will be built this AS path information in BGP update message BGP can use for two different purpose number one purpose is the loop detection number two purpose is the best path selection let's see how the loop detection function works if you see the topology something similar to this is 100 to 200 200 to 300 300 to 500 and 500 to 100 again and if the prefix has been originated from is uh, 100 prefix is 180 10 0, 0, 16 it goes there from there it goes there and from there it goes there and then from here it can come here but when that if, if you see prefix 180 is 10 0, 0, 16 the s path is 100 200 300 if s 500 sending the update back to s 100 before 100 or before s 100 accept that update message what it will do it will first check the s path on the s path what he will check if his own as is 100 is already on the path or not if it is already on the path then S100 will not accept that update message from 500, that particular one, that particular network update. Why not? Because if S100 accept that particular update message for the drop 180.10.0.16, then there will be a loop because his own AS number is already in the path. Make sense? So this is how before BGP accept any update message, they check those AS path attributes. First logic of AS path as per the attribute is make sure there is no loop in the AS connectivity diagram. In the physical diagram there can be a loop but in BGP policy they will not accept it. Simple as that. Then there will be a loop. Make sense? Any question? Okay. Next purpose of AS path attribute. Best path selection. How the best path selection function works? In best path selection function, what BGP will do from here, if it has got more than one path to the same destination, they just count how many AS number away. If network 180.10.0.0/16 has got two path, one via three AS and other via two AS, then by default two AS will be the best path. Simple as that. So this is how BGP will use or BGP will rely on AS path attribute to select best path and to make sure there is no loop. These AS path attribute, since we have two type of AS number nowadays, 4 byte and 2 byte, right? So if we have both 2 byte and 4 byte, then there will be some issues. What issues? The old AS where the router operating system is old they only support 16 bit number right when they only support 16 bit number that is a limitation of the router operating system that is the limitation of router operating system the operating system is old so the the time when the operating system was compiled coded that time there is no 4 by s number so that is why if you still carrying that operating system they don't support any 4 by s number so in that case, we will see a problem of incorporating 4 byte numbers inside. So this is why what we have, the routers, those who already support 4 byte, right, with iOS, 
they translate that 4 byte number into a special 2 byte number which is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Did you see? So this is how this 70,000 has been translated to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? But this is that will still work. Okay? We'll have a different section to discuss about how 2 byte and 4 byte can work together. Probably just keep your eye on and make yourself available on, on one of those sessions that we'll be doing probably next month or the month after, right? So the ASPAT attribute, if you see in the BGP table of the router, every prefix, if you see like this, will have this sort of ASPAT. Do you see? Some ASPAT are long, some ASPAT are short, depending on how many ASPAT. Now we will see the next hop attribute. What is the next hop? Next hop is the next order, obviously. Right? If you see the next hop, this is an attribute that BGP update messages carry all the time. We will see the diagram first. In this diagram, we have an AS number called AS100 they are connected to S200. Then S200 is connected to S300, right? So if you see those different different AS in between the red link, those are all EBGP link, right? And in S300, within S300 there are two routers, B and C. B and C, they are building a EBGP relation and that is IBGP relation, right? Okay, now you'll see S100, they have originated a network which is 160.10.0.0 slash 16. When that update message goes to AS200, right? Then what AS200 will do? AS200 will forward that update message back to AS300 on the other side. So which router is the last router on AS200 to send the update message? A router A. When router A send the update message to router B, he, router A, will change the next hop to 150.10.1.1 which IP address is that? This point to point link address. Output message comes here. So if you see from router B to go to network 160.10.0.0 from router B, next hop is 150.10.1.1. Did you see? Did you notice the next hop? It's very important. From router B, I'm trying to go to this network which is this prefix, but the next stop is 150.10.1.1, which is this, which makes more sense, right? This is how I will go up to the destination. Now, when router B forward that message to router C, which is an IBGP router, what router B is doing? When he send it to him, look very carefully, router B hasn't changed the next stop. Router B just leave the next stop as it is, which is 150.10.1.1. So if you see from router C, next stop is still that foreign next stop. Did you see that? Okay. So now, as a next hop attribute, what we can summarize, next hop is an attribute that every BGP message or BGP update will carry that tells that particular router to reach that next that particular destination, in our case, say 160, how I can walk, how I can go, I need to go to the next order, which is order B. So next hop will carry that particular information. Right? This is what a well-known mandatory attribute. If you don't have it, BGP will create an error message, error condition. This next hop attribute is handled differently by EBGP and IBGP protocol. If it is EBGP, exterior gateway, uh, sorry, uh, external BGP protocol in between two different AS, EBGP, they change the next hop to their WAN interface or outgoing interface. EBGP, they change the next hop to their outgoing interface. This is how when this router send that update to B, it is 150.10.1.1. 1 
So EBGP change the next stop to the outgoing interface address, right? But IBGP, when they send that update message to the next IBGP speaker, IBGP peer, what he, he will do? He don't change the next stop. He don't do any change on the next stop. Just leave the next stop as it is. So when router B will send that message to router C, what router B will do? Will not do anything on the update message. Just forward the message. So this is how 160.10.0.0/16. When router C will see, still the next stop is this, not this point to point link or the outgoing interface. This is what the summary. EBGP change the next stop to the outgoing interface. IBGP will not change the next stop. Okay, this is not the normal behavior. This behavior is very important for you to remember because it has got a very significant impact in your network operation. What sort of significant it will have? If router C will see the next stop is this, and if that that particular subnets are not advertised by any of the routers because it's a point to point link, right? Do not happen. From router C, this next stop is unreachable because we haven't advertised those things in IGP because next stop will be looked in IGP table. For router B, the next stop is reachable via static or sorry, via connected network, via connected. But for C, how it is reachable? Because no one advertised this slash 30, right? There will be a problem. So that is what we call reef failure problem on the BGP table. Because next stop is not reachable. So in the service provider network, what we normally do on the perimeter router, when we collect prefix from external peers, perimeter router, we have a template command into the peer group, which is next stop self. On the perimeter router, next of self. So when the prefix comes, they will forward it to the other router. They will change the next step to his own loopback. And that loopback is reachable from here by OSPF. Okay. So that is what the best practice to get rid of this sort of issues. IBGP next stop. In IBGP, the next stop is recursive check. Or recursive loop down. So, for example, in this situation, in this uh, topology, router A, B, C, D, the way they are connected, right? In IBGP, from router A to B, router A to C, A to D, we have more than one path, more than one connectivity to go, right? So, that is why we don't identify all routers into their outgoing interface, into the point to point link. What we do cleverly, we identify every router with a virtual link, a virtual uh, sort of interface, which is loopback. That loopback address we advertise in IGP. IGP, for example, OSPF. So when we advertise that in the OSPF, this virtual uh, loopback, then what happened? This loopback reachability will be ensured by OSPF, either by this path, this path, or this path. It, it depends, really depends on OSPF, how OSPF select like the best path. So now, if any of the path is down, still my next stop is reachable. If we use loopback, but if we use any outgoing interface, point to point link, and if the interface is down, the next stop is not reachable. Even though we have alternate path, link is down, so in, the interface is down. So in IBGP, what do we do? We use loopback as a next stop, and OSP will ensure that next stop is reachable. Okay, that's what we call recursive lookup. So, in IBGP's case, when we do next of self in here, it goes there, the update message goes there. So, when C look how to go to other side, say 160 network in here, they will see next of as loopback of this one, right? So, when they will see next of as loopback of this one, then they do the recursive lookup into IGP or OSPF and try to make sure how we can go there, what which physical interface can be used to go there, right? So IBGP, they send the update or uh, next up update to unchanged. They don't really change. Any questions so far? All right, if no question, then we can discuss some uh, next up best practice.
as I said, EBGP they change the next stop to the outgoing interface. IBGP they don't change the next stop. The next stop best practice is if you forget, if you forget to do next stop self on the perimeter router, if you forget to do next stop to the perimeter router, for example, like this or this, right? What happened? If you forget to do next stop self to this perimeter router, what will happen? If the prefix announcement goes to the other router, they still can see next stop as a foreign next stop. And if that particular IP address doesn't have any announcement, then you're in trouble. Next stop is not reachable and you'll have any failure. So, as I said, next stop best practice on all the perimeter router, we use next stop self as a template command in peer group. Make sense? Is it clear? Okay. <laughs> this command we need to do manually. It's not a default command anyway. Now we'll see BGP origin attribute. What is BGP origin attributes? There are three options that we have as an origin attribute in BGP. Number one is it can be IGP like this or it can be EGP or it can be incomplete question mark. Well, okay. When we'll see IGP as the next of attribute. If the originate, originating router, the router who has originated the prefix, they use a network statement to originate the prefix, then the origin attribute we can see always IGP. If you use a network statement from the originating router. In a historical case, when uh, there was a protocol called EGP, right, historical protocol, that we don't use anymore because EGP or uh, the historical protocol is only class full, right. So, but, th but that attribute still we carry in the current BGP implementation. So, we don't need to worry about this EGP attribute anymore. Next up, nowadays we don't see that EGP, but just for your own understanding, EGP next up can be seen if this prefix has been originated by an EGP protocol. The last one, third one is incomplete, a question mark. When we will see the next, uh, sorry, uh, BGP origin attribute as incomplete. If the router who is injecting the prefix into BGP, he learned that prefix via any distribution from WestPF, from ISIS, from IG, uh, EIGRP, if they need any distribution into BGP, then those prefix will come with an incomplete origin attribute. Okay. Normally, uh, in internet nowadays, most of the prefix or nearly all the prefixes that we have are with I or IBGP origin attribute. We don't see E or question mark nowadays. Okay, BGP local preference. BGP local preference is uh, an attribute that is well known and discretionary. Well known means you must have, oh, sorry, uh, uh, I mean you must support it. Discretionary means you don't send it to other AS or next AS. So what we do using local preference attribute is we manipulate the traffic. We call it a traffic engineering tool, BGP traffic engineering tool. I'm saying BGP traffic engineering tool. Don't confuse it with uh, MPLS traffic engineering. So BGP also can do traffic engineering, right? 
So this path is my best path, that path is my best path, incoming this, outgoing this, that can be done in BGP as well. So when BGP will do traffic engineering, how BGP will do that? BGP will match your traffic based on your network prefix, right? To which destination, to which destination the prefix is going. And if you have router A and router B, right? Both the router sending you the network information to the third router, router C. Both router A and B, when they are sending the routing updates to router C, right? By default, they'll use the local preference attribute as 100. So, from both A and B, both from both A and B, when router C is receiving it, he'll see from this side, 100, this side, 100, right? So, it's a tie, local preference is tie. So they check other attribute to select the path now. But if you want to manipulate it, say for example, you want router A can be used to send the traffic outside. We call it outgoing traffic. Router A can be used to send the traffic outside, outgoing traffic. So what you can do, when you send the prefix advertisement at the first place to router C, you just tweak the local preference attribute. How you tweak it? From router A, you change the next stop to a number and in our case high is the value prefer the path so if you want router a need to be the main router to go outside then you tweak the next of uh, sorry uh, local preference value to 150 you change it to 150 on order a and don't do anything on order b when those advertisement comes to order c router c will have the same destination but two different order option a which is order a option b which is order b which one is the best path now it will see local pref for router a is 150 local pref for router b is 100 which one is best now router c will consider a is the best because it has got higher local press pref so this is how by tweaking that routing update local prefer attribute you can select or you can manipulate outgoing traffic right incoming advertisement outgoing traffic that's what the purpose of local preference attribute make sense see an example in here we have order a b and c right so this is what all the routers within a single AS. We have a prefix 160.10.0.0/16 originated from AS100, so which is remote AS. It's not directly connected with AS400, right? So this update message from AS100 will come all the way via this path to router A, all the way to this path to router B. So AS400 has got two sources to collect the route. 160 via source A from PRB or from, uh, from BGP speaker D from router B with PGP speaker E. So when those two router of single AS400, they will collect the route. If I want, this router will be the default router to go outside or the best route to go outside for destination 160. What I'll do, when I'll collect the prefix on router B, I'll tweak the value from default 100 to 800, right? And if you do change it to 500, doesn't matter, right? When it goes on router C, router C will consider 8 as the, sorry, B as the best path because I have the path, I have, sorry, I have the local prefer value, prefer the path. Make sense? If you see BGP, BGP table, you can see uh, the local pref in here, like this one. Did you see 100, default 100? MED attribute, and if you see local pref attribute, this is, we, call, we consider it 
uh, well known discretionary right so the local prep significance is only within the AS only within the AS okay then uh, BGP media attribute multi exit discrimination uh, this uh, attribute is non transitive optional what does that means it means from one as it goes to the next as next as not necessarily will forward it to the next as no only in between two as because it's non transitive right so by using MED attribute you only can manipulate traffic in between two A's not from a global point of view no from the remote A's you cannot do any manipulation let's have a look how it works say in this uh, diagram our own A's is 200 one and within 201 we have a prefix called 12068 1.0 slash 24 right to this particular prefix i want to manipulate incoming traffic local pref was used to manipulate outgoing traffic now in here we want to manipulate incoming traffic when you want to manipulate incoming traffic what do you do you need to tweak outgoing outer advertisement so from here router b we change the MED attribute to 1000 and in here router A we change the MED attribute to 2000. The logic when those updates goes to this AS, this AS will select the best path based on what? To come to this particular destination. They will check the update that we receive from our neighboring router or neighboring AS on the update what is the MED value? If the MED is lower, prefer the path. It's opposite of local pref. Lower the value, prefer the path. So since we tweaked your, our routing update message, this is how we are influencing traffic from AS200, how they can come via my router B or router A. Did you see how the perspective is different than local pref? In local pref, within my router, which outgoing router will be selected, right? And in MED, from outside is how the traffic will come. Okay, same way if you see a uh, BGP table in the BGP table, uh, MED you can see as a uh, metric, default is zero. Community attribute, BGP community attribute uh, is an attribute that is transitive, optional transitive. What it will do? It can tag a number of uh, prefixes in the group. So for example, what we saw in BGP traffic engineering tools, we only can quantify BGP traffic class or class of traffic with the prefix. So prefix, if the prefix is slash 24, we can only quantify whole traffic from that slash 24, nothing other than that. But if our requirement is bigger than this, right, we need to sort of classify whole traffic, so not only one subnet, 5, 10, 20, 30 subnets. So for example, whole Asia Pacific, whole European traffic, and significant is global. This is how you want to manipulate. Then we need to have a tool to group a number of prefix into a class. That is what the community is. So BGP community is a 16-bit integer that can be used to tag a number of prefix with a sing single class. So what you will do? BGP community attribute can be used. So, so for example, when you receive, I'll give you a very uh, real-time example. In ISP, say in Australia, they have got five or six transit up, uh, uplink, right? One goes to Australia, uh, sorry, one goes to Asia, other goes to Europe, US, right, different, different places. If they would like to classify all the European prefixes that he is receiving, 
will be going via the router connected to the European network. All the prefixes or traffic going to US will go via the router connected to the US. So what they will do, they will tag all the prefixes that is receiving from the US router with say for example community 10. All the traffic is coming via Asian router tag 20, right? And based on that, they will send that prefix back to their network. And in their network, what they will do, so, so for example, you see tagging, tagging is done by the upstream. Asian upstream, they tag their prefix. European upstream, they tag their prefix. And then send it to your, your network. In your routers, what do you do? Based on the tagging they did, you do the community match. And based on the community, community match, you manipulate the local prefix or other attribute in BGP. This is how you can do the traffic engineering. It's just an example how those attributes can be used to manipulate the path, right? So community is this sort of a very useful tool. So when you see all the attributes coming to BGP, so BGP, so if you, if you, since you saw all those attributes, BGP has got an option to deal with the number of attributes and from the number of attributes, how BGP will be will prioritize which attribute can be used first and which one is second to select the best part because we have a number of attributes. There is a preference. At step one, they will prioritize weight. Weight is a proprietary Cisco attribute. Now probably it's become familiar with all the other uh, vendors as well. They'll consider weight metric first or weight attribute first. Then they'll select the local preference. Then they'll select uh, uh, router are generated by the local routers, then they will check the shortest S path, then they will check the origin code, IGP, EGP and incomplete, then uh, prefer lower ABD, then prefer EGP path over IBGP path, EBGP over IBGP, then they will uh, see the closest IGP neighbor, then number 9, they will prefer oldest route in the EGP table and if all time, then they will use the router ID, lowest router ID. So this is what sort of an algorithm that BGP use to select the best path, All right? Very straightforward. So this is sort of an, an introduction of BGP attributes and how those attributes can be manipulated and how BGP select the best path, right? So it's just sort of an idea uh, and the discussion about BGP attributes. If you need to know more about that and if you need to do some hands-on, I recommend you to sort of make yourself available in any of our routing workshop. So longer version face to face routing workshop that we do uh, in different different country or different different economy in NOG event. We do uh, hands on as well. Uh, we have a topology, we have an instruction so you can configure those things by yourself. And this is how you can see the reflection. You can manipulate the path selection process of BGP. Hope the session will be useful for you. We are uh, nearly at the end of the presentation. Do you have, we have any question, by the way, about what we discussed? If you don't have any question, uh, then uh, I would uh, request you to spare some time and go to this URL, which is our survey URL. Go to that URL and send us some survey as a feedback. And this is how we will try to improve our future e-learning session. And when you will finish the survey, then it will redirect you to an FTP site. From that FTP site, you can download the presentation. So when you finish the survey, the survey will redirect you to the FTP site. From there, you can download the presentation. Okay. If you still have any question about the training or any other thing, you obviously can come to our evening help desk. The help desk will run from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. in Brisbane time. Brisbane time zone is GMT plus 10. Okay. You also can send us an uh, email directly, training at apening.net, and we'll try to answer your question. Okay. Okay. Can you copy the link to the chat, please? Okay. Sure, I can do that.
that is the URL that you can use to send us a feedback. Okay. So thank you very much, and uh, hope you'll enjoy the session and. Uh,